Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a video on Microsoft Word page setup and, and layout. It should be very, very short. And these skills should be transferable regardless of the operating system you're working on, although you may have to look in different places to find some of these op options on a Mac, for instance. But I've opened up um, the previous document we've worked on um, in another video that I've shared. So this is a, 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 I took most of the styles out. What we're really interested in here is just a quick look at how you lay out a document in terms of how it will be printed. The reason for this is that you may or may not have a printer. You may or may not ever plan to actually print anything out. But you save it and send it to someone else in an email or put it on a web page or upload it to a shared document file folder on SharePoint or in the workplace. Someone else may need to print it out to read it on the bus or to mark it up or whatever. So understanding how this works is important. So there are margins, which tends to be the white space at the top sides and bottom of a document. There's the orientation of where the, whether the page is taller than it is wide when it's printed on. There is the size of the paper that would come out of the printer, plus a few other things that are worth knowing about in order to print properly. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and make this document smaller so we can see the whole page. And I actually clicked a whole bunch here, but one could easily go to the View tab and look at one page like that. There we go. And it's actually a multi-page document, two pages, but this is how you can see this. A reason I want to do this is we're going to go to the Layout tab and its ribbon. We want to look at the margins. The default margins for Word tend to be one inch all the way around, which is good for a lot of correspondence. It may be what's required for turning in term papers and so on. Moderate is a little bit more casual and leaves just as much uh, white space at the top and the bottom, but a little bit less on the sides. So that can also be useful for correspondence. Narrow is if you're doing something for yourself, you're just like making lists and writing stuff. Narrow gives you about, I think, half an inch all the way around. And you can also choose to set up a custom margin. So, um, for instance, I tend to like 1.2 at the top in case I put a header and maybe 0.75 at the bottom and then like this. So this is a way that you can do this. Now note when I clicked that and got the custom, I got this page setup panel here. The page setup panel allows me to change the margins, the paper size, and the um, layout of how things may print out and so on. So right now, I'm just going to stick with the margins. Oh, and it also gives me a chance to change the orientation. But I'm just going to change the margins like I did and click OK. And now you can see I have a larger top and bottom margin and a narrow one on the sides. Over next to the margins on the page setup group of your layout uh, tab ribbon, you could choose orientation, choose landscape. See how it's wider than it is tall? Slightly so. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to portrait. And then size tends to default to the standard letter size sheet of paper of 8.5 by 11. You could make it 11 by 17, which is quite a bit bigger. Often make good for making quick posters. Legal size for smaller posters. And then these others tend to be things that were used in the office space for special sizes of envelopes and such. So a lot of this is legacy, but you may go into a workspace depending on the kind of work you do and need to use some of those. Now that we've seen how those look, um, I'm going to bring this forward so we can see it a little bit better. Columns gives you a chance. This isn't so much a printing thing, but it gives you the chance to change your work into a couple of columns. The difficulty here is you may not want all of your work to be in columns, so you have to think very carefully about that. And if you do want some of your work to be in more than one column, you'll need to get familiar with something called breaks. This is where you could break a page uh, content and shove it down to the next page. So I might like this here all on this page and want this content and lower to be on the next page. I can come up here to the Layout tab choose breaks and change or set what they call a page break. And what will happen is it will take and push that text down to the next page and leave only this here. 
But here's something I want to show you with the columns. If I choose columns, the columns will appear on both pages. So how do you change that if you don't want that? I'm going to use the Control Z to undo the last two steps I did. Control Zachary. And I'm going to instead come up here and indicate that I would like this content to still be on the next page, but I want to create something called a next page section. In this section, I should be able to set two columns while having the first section remain the same. So that's a nifty trick, huh? Now let's take a final quick look at why we were doing this for the print possibility. The print setup page allows you to get a preview of what your document will look like when it's being printed. If it's a little small for your taste, you can use the slider down here to make it bigger so that you can see um, the text and where it's breaking. You can choose a printer. You can print one-sided on that printer, collated. That will mean something to you if you have a printer that does these things. A lot of workplaces have big, fancy Hewlett Packard or other types of printers that can, you know, print anything and bind it and collate it and, and, and serve you coffee at the same time. You can also change the orientation of the page right here. You could change the page size. You could even um, change the margins if you want to. But this is what the print preview looks like. So anyway, that should give you a quick overview of the kind of things that you could do with the page layout information in Microsoft Word. I hope it was helpful to you. Thanks very much.